So the last video was pretty long and we discussed the building template manager. We didn't really go into depth with the tabular building manager and we're certainly not going to do that in this session. In this session, we're going to have a brief introductory look at profiles. Like a lot of things within IES, we can go into lots and lots of details if we want to. However, for the purposes of just trying to create a model, we don't actually have to go into that much. A lot of this is, and what we're going to be covering now, is for your information rather than something that you'll necessarily be doing. Quite often if we're doing this at a commercial level or we're doing this, as we say, in anger, as in we're working towards a project, we'd be using templates that cover the vast majority of the profiles that we're going to be using. However, it is fundamental that we understand how they work because much of how IES works in terms of its dynamic modeling is actually based on how conditions within rooms change dynamically over the course of days, over the course of weeks, the course of months. So with that in mind, let's just recap very, very briefly on the building template manager, just to reiterate the things that we're going effectively going to be adjusting. And then let's jump into profiles. So in the building template manager, we notice the profiles, we built a kitchen profile last time, and we notice that we have an operation profile here for heating, and we have opera, we have profiles, variation profiles for the general lighting and for people and air exchanges as well. And these all have profiles. Now to access profiles, we can either go through the building template manager or we can access it through Apache, usefully later as well when we do our Vista Pro, we can also access it through here. So we can make adjustments from Vista, which as you gain experience of looking at results, particularly if you're trying to bug solve, this is quite handy to have this link in here. Okay, so here we go. And we're greeted with this new window and it can be intimidating on first experience to be see all this because there's just so much stuff. What we have is effectively a couple of different forms of profiles. These each represent a profile on a daily profile at that. We also have weekly profiles, which are built of daily profiles. And we have annual profiles that are built of, oddly enough, daily profiles. So we have these tools. We can also build them up a weekly as well, just remembered. We also have compact and freeform profiles, which again, this is one of those areas, if we wanted to, we could go into more detail here and maybe this would be a subject for a later video. They are a shortcut for producing large table, for producing a profile. However, it's important with these kind of software to understand the basics before using tools that take shortcuts. If we start with the shortcut, like we could have started with just importing a table, you know, importing a template, then we we may be founding our confidence on non-solid ground, which is another way of saying, you don't know what you're standing on, how can you ever defend it? So let's look at the daily profiles. In this we can, we see we've got a few already, but let's build one for the heating of our kitchen. That would be a good place to spar. And this, that one for the kitchen might also be quite helpful for other things as well. So a profile doesn't necessarily have to be something for just have one purpose. It can have many purposes. And you'll find that office, office profiles tend to get used for a lot of things like an office equipment, no, an office occupancy schedule can also be used for say, looking at equipment, lighting, <coughs> even the heating. Anyway, here we've opened up the box and we're greeted with this interface here. We have profile name, so obviously we want to name this something sensible. I'm going to call this daily kitchen system. You may call it something else. Now, moving across, we have an ID for this. IDs are useful. Um, if we have lots and lots, we can just skim through if we know this. But 
you can ignore that for the most part. And then we have these two here, modulating and absolute, and we can click between the two. What modulating does is modulation has no units attached to it. So a 50% modul modulation assumes that the total value is going to be at 50% at that point. So if I had occupancy and a modulating value, 50% assumes a 50% occupancy. 100 at 1, that assumes 100% occupancy. If I have an absolute, then now we use the full figures. So this is useful if you're doing, or used to be, how we would do setback figures. Now we have that two tone, um, two value system that we saw in the template manager, which has made this bit a little bit more redundant, really. But absolute value, what would occur is, as the value is reached, so let's just put an example in here, we could say 16 degrees, and we could say this goes up to 22 degrees over the course of the day, and we can see the values are gone in there. So that all, that's all that is. Delete that because they're not. <laughs> okay, we can see a little bit of an error there. Hopefully that won't come back to bite us, but it should be fine. Okay, the next thing we have is the categories. The categories, cooling, daylighting, equipment, heating, HVAC, HVAC lighting, miscellaneous, occupancy, plant, solar, ventilation, water. These categories, when we tick them, will change where this appears within our within the building template manager and around IES. The idea is that we keep profiles just to where they're needed. For the students that are watching, I have an unorthodox tip for this, which is if you can't work this out, just take them all. And in that way, you know that you're, it's going to appear at least somewhere where you want it to. For everyone else and people who are professionals learning this software, it's a good idea to take the time to learn where this is. As this is the daily system kitchen, we're going to put in heating, HVAC, and actually, because this might be useful for occupancy as well, uh, we'll put this in equipment, so that'll appear in our internal gains. We'll put this in our occupancy, so it turns up there. Our lighting, again, for our internal gains and our occupancy for internal gains. And we'll put it in for our ventilation as well. Tidy. We could put it in for this, this, and this, uh, this, and this as well. And great. So that's going to appear in quite a few places within the software already. Now let's build a profile. Now we're going to need to do something slightly counterintuitive, which is we're going to insert time slots for when this is going to start happening. We're going to assume that people, well, let's do this together. When are people likely to get up for breakfast? It's very much dependent on culture, but I, I tend to get up around about seven. So I'd go zero. Unless it's a weekend, in which case, oof, God knows. And I'm going to leave the first value as zero. And then I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to press the plus symbol to duplicate it. And then at seven o'clock, I'm going to say that the kitchen is on. Then between seven and eight, that kitchen is occupied. So we can see that that little line has come across. And then from eight onwards, the kitchen is no longer occupied. And then let's just assume I'm not working from home this day. Then I'm coming back at 18.30, using the kitchen for half an hour. Just realized I'm giving away way too many details about my life. But there we go. Using it for an hour, making a bit of dinner, doing a bit of eating. So the kitchen might be in our use during that time. Then it's off again. And importantly, these must end at midnight. So we need to complete the circuit. And why not? Let's make let's have a let's have a midnight snack. Eleven thirty. 
and it's a very very quick oops so what I've accidentally here is because I haven't duplicated the 1130 to be zero we can see that it's caused this ramp to occur this is really 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 helpful when we are trying to describe say offices because we know that not everyone arrives at the same time there's going to be a difference of time say a 30 minute ramp up period so this can be handy for modeling that kind of thing so let's duplicate that one 1300 set it at zero and then at 30 and that's up till 23 that's up to 24 Oops. That's up to twenty. Can we do this? Oops. All right. And then we want that for fifteen minutes, twenty-three forty-five. Zero point. Oops. There we go. Zero point five. And then after that, we're back to zero. And that's this profile done then. If we hit OK, we can see the profiles in there. There's some other aspects about this as well. We could edit this graphically if we wanted to. So we can drag these about. I tend to find this a little bit finickety for my taste, but you may have more luck with it. Cancel. We could verify the profile we can also and this will be a subject of a later video insert a formula so we can insert control logics in as well this can be very handy for modeling things like operable windows as we'll find out later but that's our daily profile done okay save now if we go to weekly profile we're greeted with this and again, the same sort of thing, so weekly kitchen system. And now we can set up the variance over the course of the week. And I'll appreciate that this one is a little tricky, the interface. There we go, that's everything I want linked. But the first thing that we want to do is we just want to set the most common thing that we're likely to find so in this case it's the daily kitchen system double click that and we can see that it's gone in for all days now is it going to be the case on the weekend absolutely not i'm not waking up at seven o'clock on a saturday no chance so we're not going to we're going to untick the same profile for each day and we're going to say the same profile for each weekday and same profile for each weekend day and just to see what would happen here, we're going to click on the Saturday. And just for the moment, I'm going to, oops, we need to turn that off. And there we go. And we can see that these are in, these have changed. Now, clearly, a parking garage fan modulation weekday is not what a <laughs> best description of my use of a kitchen on a Saturday. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go back to a daily profile and make another one, same as before, daily kitchen system weekend, same process, and this time I'm going to give myself a lion, so and it goes and it goes and let's say nine o'clock have a leisurely breakfast at this point and again same process we're just building up this over time And then in the evening, I might have a later dinner or a couple of drinks in the kitchen. There we 
go. And we might say that this is occupied for. Oh, we said that we're having a dinner meal in the original profile. So why don't we do something like that? Let's say it starts at eight and finishes at 10. Is this realistic of every Saturday? No, but for an example, it's fine. There we go. And there is our schedule built for the weekend. Okay. Now, if I go to my weekly profiles, and I go back to my kitchen, I can change the, these weekend ones now. So I can, I forgot to untick. Easily done. And it is though annoying each time. So let's go same profile for each end day. There we go. And that's in. And why not? We'll put that in for the holiday as well. Oops. There we go. Don't worry about these ones on the bottom. They're fine. Okay, so we've got a daily, we've got a weekly. If we wanted to, we could create an annual profile. This can be helpful, particularly if we're dealing with heating systems and trying to model them accurately. And particularly if we have a heating system, if let's phrase that differently. If we have a boiler system within IES, providing it's underneath the set point temperature, it will be in operation. In reality, people turn their heating off or turn their cooling off if you're in from a hotter climate during certain parts of the year and will just deal with the slight cool thaw, the overheating. So we can use an annual profile to reflect that. We can also use annual profiles to reflect the occupancy of the spaces. So if we have something like a school, then we would model the school being out of operation from August to mid-September. Very powerful tool that is because we have, uh, during that time, we may have some of the hottest days of the year. So we don't really take into consideration then how, we don't really take into consideration or remove those from our overheating calculations. It's quite a powerful tool. Let's just show you how this one works. This one again works off building up the course for you. We can see that it already starts on December the 21st. Let's say, let's have a look at our kitchen and say we're gonna be vacationing for six weeks during the six weeks holiday for with some kids, with our kids. So let's say kitchen, again, annual system. You will develop your own way of naming things, or you may have a convention already if you're working professionally. Again, our categories, let's go equipment, heating, HVAC, lighting, mis oh, why not? Plant, ventilation, there we go. And we can see that we have our weekly kitchen system in there. And we might say, okay, we're gonna go on holiday in August. So up until August, this is the case. Then add after August till September, we are off. Then till the end of December, we're back in. And that's that made then. Hit save, done. If you wanna have a go at freeform profiles, then have a crack at them, but I would say have an experiment or watch another YouTube video. I will try and cover them at some point, but realistically, it's gonna be a while. Okay. So now that we've created our profile, oof, always made a mistake there. Oh, I hope I haven't accidentally deleted that. That would be quite funny if I did. Easily done, easily done. Looks like it is fine. Yeah, it's fine. Building template manager. Let's go and insert this now onto our main system. Sorry, not on our main system at all. Space conditions. 
So I'm going to set this now to our kitchen system, weekly kitchen system. See, we have the two here. We can choose between the annual system or the weekly. And then what I might do is, do I want to set this as a two to value? No, I think it's fine. We're just going to say that during these times, the kitchen is going to heat up to 19 degrees. We're going to leave the rest as it. Oh, and actually we can edit the internal gains as well. We might as well, since we're doing it here. So with the people that we've added in, we can see from the T that it's the one in the template, the general lighting. Let's change that over to our weekly system. Let's as well change it here. Hit apply, okay, okay. And just for the time, I'm gonna leave that all the same. In fact, our kitchen ventilation, since it's running at the moment, maybe not correctly, as demand ventilation, which is unlikely for a kitchen in a domestic dwelling, but because it is, it's gonna follow these profiles anyway. I'm gonna hit save. And what I would like to do now is you could stop watching this video if you wanted to. It's already 21 minutes long. I did say I'd try and make this one shorter, but I'm gonna run it in a simulation and we're just gonna see the effects of that profile. So I'm gonna sit, hit save. I'm gonna enable suncast link. I'm not quite sure why this is disabled as default. I'm gonna give this results file a proper name, which is good practice. So we might give it a date, which is 2302.21. We'll call it Apache, Apache Sim or Dynamic Sim. Might be for, ooh, can't spell Dynamic Sim. And then we might say Kitchen, Kitchen Test. And if I was doing this in anger, I'd have log file to my right where I was just recording what I was doing within this run. Hit simulate. What I'm just going to check as well while that's running is that in preferences that yeah I've got this set up in parallel that's fine. We can see that this is running off now. Just wait to that finish, all done. Let's go into Vista. And I haven't touched on Vista in detail yet, and I'm not going to in this one, but I just want to see what the effect is on that kitchen room. So let's see our kitchen. I'm just gonna do a quick check here. I'm glad I did because as it turns out, I uh, forgot to apply the construction kitchen, the thermal template to it. So that wasn't going to work. Let's do that one more time. I guess I didn't save it when I finished the video last time. So hit, let's hit the thermal template. Okay. Query. Okay. Okay. Let's run that sim off. Am I going to cut the video a little bit shorter? Absolutely not. I think it's good when we work with software like this that we are honest and people make mistakes in it. It's, it's a big package. It's easy, you know, it's easily done. There are lots of options. And it's good to see people making mistakes so you can see the kind of things that you can do to try and fix and verify them. That's an important part of learning software. It's not just learning about how it works well. It's learning what to do when it goes wrong. So here we go, we got our kitchen now. Let's go to a day in the winter. When we know the heating is gonna be on, we can see the heating set point over the course of the month. Let's have a look at the course of the day. There's probably an issue with my profile in there somewhere, I think because we can see that it's doing this ramping up and ramping down. But if we go to our space conditioning load, and what I've done is I've just tagged the room, so I have the room variables. I think that will be the subject of next week of the next video. We'll be having to look at this in more detail. But plant sensible load, I can see that we have the loading in there as well. 
I can also tell just from immediately that this looks to be way, way, way too high. That's going to be a subject of another video. We'll have a look at why this is too high another time. Let's see, we've got our internal gains for the space from people. We have our lighting conditions. We know that if we go to a Saturday, we should see a difference. So if we have a look over the course of a week, we can see differences in use. So the weekend has a distinctly different profile from the days of the week. And we should see that the air temperature changes over the course of the day as well. And we can see when that heating kicks in. And just from a gut feeling of this, it looks like our air exchange rates are v much too high. So that's why we get such a sharp contrast from between the high and the low so quickly, was we would expect it to be a more gentle slope over the course of the day, carried by the thermal mass of the building. And just as a guess, I think that, yeah, there we go. The auxiliary ventilation that I inputted in via that uh, demand-driven ventilation, because there's no heat recovery on it, it's a massive, massive, heat loss to the building. So that may be something we try and fix. All right, this ended up being, again, quite a long video, but it's a quite a large area and quite an important area to cover. In the next video, we're going to have a look at, probably gonna have a look a little bit at this tool, Vista Pro, and the means of analysis. And then the video after that, I think we're gonna be looking more into macro flow. That might be where I wind up the series because I'm doing this a little bit in my spare time just because I wanted a resource for people to be able to use that wasn't restricted behind paywalls and I felt that there was a little bit of a gap between videos that taught the tutorials, taught the software, but also gave a little bit of insight into how we model as professionals or within academia and how this process and a little bit of theory about modeling as well. So thanks all for very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.